we're going to talk a little bit about uh, guidance today and relationships and what that means when we are working with children. And I love this quote here, the kids who need the most love will ask for it in the most unloving ways. Dan Gartell He's author of Education for Civil Society. Um, he came up with uh, different skills of um, how we can, as teachers, as adults, um, foster these skills in children. And so the first thing he said was that we find acceptance as a member of a group and worthy individual. Um, he believed that if we if we understand our role or our place in the group and our importance in the group, that we're not going to want to hurt the group. Um, we also want to express our emotions in non-hurting ways um, and foster that with, with children to let them know that they have valid emotions um, and they can express those emotions um, verbally. Um, also solving problems creatively, having um, giving the tools to children, uh, social emotional tools to regulate their behaviors, but then having them come up with um, the answer as far as how they can do that. So as adults, we facilitate those interactions with children in guidance. And um, if there's a mistaken behavior, then we want to um, give them the tools so that they can actually do that in the future. Also accepting unique human qualities in others. Everyone is different. Um, other, there are children, there are people in life that will push your buttons because of uh, your past and how you were brought up or your culture or um, anything that uh, has, has shaped you to be who you are. And so understanding that there are other people that are different than you and accepting those traits in others. And then, of course, getting children to think intelligently and ethically when they are dealing with their peers. So long-term goals for guidance is um, the number one thing is we want to foster social and emotional intelligence. Our whole goal in education, and especially in the younger years when we're building that foundation, is to foster their social and emotional intelligence. Um, once they are in K through 12 in that school, they have to have a good, healthy, social emotional intelligence for their uh, learning to take place and so being able to have relationships with others and healthy relationships with others um, needs to be the foundation of their learning we also want to make sure that we build their inner control um, and the ability to self-regulate. So they need to be able to understand their emotions, name their emotions, and then be able to regulate those emotions. And as teachers, our job is to teach the skills um, needed to be an effective member of, com of the community. And so as teachers, as parents, as every, as adults in children's life, our job is to, to teach them how to do this, how to do life. And so, giving them those, um, think about how you want to be taught a new skill and how you can actually um, do that with children, even though it might be really hard for us, especially if it pushes but certain buttons, um, that, that how would you want to be taught a new skill? And if you think back on a time when you were really angry, how did you control or regulate your feelings? Um, what were the consequences? What experiences have you had that have helped you learn to control your feelings? I'll share something that um, when I was raised, uh, the way I was raised, um, my parents were, um, I guess, differently. My dad was very controlling and he believed in physical punishment. Um, the, the Bible verse to spoil it, well, it's not even a Bible verse, um, but to spare the rod, spoil the child type of thing. And so um, they used to give us spankings and they would give us 
spankings with a belt for serious infractions. And so it was just me and my sister. And both of us were pretty, um, I think I was more so emotional and um, tr tried not to do the wrong thing. Um, very much did not want to disappoint people, but I also was a child and so mistakes were going to be made um, because I, I was, again, I'm learning life. And um, that really stayed with me. The, um, I, I, I grew up not appreciating sp being spanked and um, felt that it really hurt my psyche. And so when I had kids, that was my one thing. I'm never going to spank my kids. Well, I had my daughter, um, and she's 25 now. But when I first had her, I um, she was such an easy, easy child. Um, but when she was about two, she was in the bathtub, and she wouldn't come to me. And she was kind of doing that neener, neener um, with her hands. And just, um, I think I had... Uh, not gotten a lot of sleep and it was just a it, perfect storm and I reached over and I spanked her bottom and immediately we both started burst into tears um, and she eventually kind of stopped crying because I was crying so hard I was out crying her and because I thought wow I I finally was tested and I did what I knew I shouldn't do but I did what I only knew. And instead of using the tools in my toolbox on how to, um, how to diffuse a situation, how to help her in this situation, I resorted back to what I knew. And so, um, I am thankful that that was the only time though, that I ever did spank her. Some of the short-term goals when we um, look at guidance is to behave in ways that promote safety. So we want to use tools and toys and materials and make sure that we help children uh, follow classroom rules and routines. And I'm going to put a video in this module on um, Chicago Public Schools, SEL at Marcus Garvey Elementary. They infuse their social-emotional learning with... They infuse social and emotional learning into everything that they do during the day. It's a really, it's, it's a fabulous um, program that they are modeling at this elementary school. So you can look at that. When we talk about um, <clears throat> guidance with children and um discipline. Those are two very different things. So um, our job is to guide them um, and they are watching us. They're watching us on how we interact with each other and we want to make sure that our speech, that the way we communicate is respectful and so we are listening. So we're listening to and seeking to understand, not listening and forming our next uh, argument. We are responding in very calm and um, appropriate ways. And then we're using I messages. And I messages would be, I feel angry when I see you not listening to me. I feel sad when you don't play with me. So having um, teaching children how to use I messages as well in their interactions with peers as well as their teachers. Um, how we respond to children is very different depending on how, again, we were raised. Our goal, though, is to develop positive teacher, positive teacher-child relationships. And to do that, we need to engage in one-on-one -on -one interactions with children. So making sure that we have special uh, time with each child, that it's not just um, a teacher in a group, because you're always going to have those children that demand more time. And a lot of times we spend time with the ones that demand more time. And we want to make sure that we uh, spend time with the ones that don't as well. Um, make sure that you get on a child's level for face-to-face -face interactions. Get down on the floor. Get down to their level. Uh, use a pleasant, calm and voice and simple language. 
provide warm, responsive physical contact, and acknowledge children for their accomplishments and effort. So conflicts are going to happen. They're going to happen all the time in early childhood classrooms because it's it's life and they are trying to figure out uh, how to how to work and be in a community. And if we are teachers trying to resolve conflicts, um, here's a, if you notice the picture, this is a Persona Dolls. And Persona Dolls are great to help with uh, conflict resolution and using them to work out um, issues that are coming up in the classroom. So preventing conflicts from becoming too serious to resolve easily, making sure that your environment is set up, that your time is set up. If you notice that, um, and this goes back to observation, which we, we know were, was really important with the theorists, going back to ob observing children and watching them, um, if we're noticing that at a certain transition, there's a lot of conflict at, um, a certain time of the day, there's a lot of conflict. What can you do to ease some of that conflict? Um, making sure that you're preventing it before it, it happens. Um, that is one of the reasons why um, when children line up to go outside, if they're going to go outside and you make them line up and then you have to deal with a couple of people's coats and setting, you know, doing their coats or doing shoes or taking a few to the bathroom, you're going to have conflicts. If children are waiting in line in close proximity, you're going to have some conflicts. So what could you do in place of that? Could you have one teacher take out who's ready to go and one teacher stay behind um, with the stragglers? So doing that before it becomes a problem. Mistaken behavior, we want to make sure that we, um, that mistaken behavior can interfere with their cognitive, social, or emotional development. The uh, mistaken behavior is harmful to the child, to other children, or to adults, and um, can put a child at higher risk for later social problems or school failure. So we want to make sure that we take care of that early in the early years, in the preschool years, so that we can help the child. So some of this, the strategies for dealing with mistaken behavior would be redirection. Um, that is almost a before it happens, kind of redirect them into a different area. Natural and logical consequences. So logical consequences would be um, you give them a consequence that is um, around what was happening. A natural con consequence actually happens on, on its own. Um, such as if a child is um, not being nice to another child and that child says, I don't want to play with you, that's a natural consequence. Um, they're not uh, going to be able to play with that child because the child is angry at them. Um, research has shown that timeout does not work, so we want to make sure that we avoid timeout. And of course, physical punishment is never, ever appropriate.